The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. The Resurrection of Jesus. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Good morning to you all once again. Good Easter morning. Today I decided to abandon my normal style of preaching and to do as I do only very infrequently, I am going to use a manuscript for my sermon. I wanted to keep this sermon reasonably short today, and recently whenever I feel like I'm going to have a short message, I end up with a longer than intended sermon. So today we're going to be using the manuscript. Easter is such a wonderful season, and this year it is, at least to me, and I'm certain it is to you all as well, especially, especially, due to our abrupt inability to properly observe Easter last year, the loss of Easter worship was without a doubt one of the most symbolic tragedies of 2020. It certainly was for all of us Christ followers. Thus, this season, this entire last week, has been such a blessing to our spirits. There is just something so special about Easter. Let's pause for a few moments and contemplate all that has transpired this last week, this time leading up to this service. As we do, I want to thank all of you who have participated in large parts and in small in all the projects and programs of Holy Week. I want to thank all of you who attended and testified to everyone of your faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Without those helping hands and those attending hearts, we simply couldn't do what we've done this week. Thank you all. But let's begin our review. Last Sunday, Palm Sunday, at the beginning of the service, the children proceeded from the back of the sanctuary and paraded through the congregation, waving their palm branches. These branches and this procession in remembrance of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. That marked the beginning of that first, that original, Holy Week. Our procession remembers that original procession. That procession with so many souls with such high, high hopes of being freed and delivered from the oppression of the Roman Empire. That first Holy Week started with such joy, such anticipation of what lie ahead. Many of the occupants of Jerusalem were certain that at last their Messiah, their promised King, had come. The conquering king would liberate them by force and seek this descendant of David upon his throne. Little did they know what was coming, what Jesus was really all about, and what Jesus would endure, all for the love of them and for the love of all of us, for the love of all mankind. As we watched our little procession, though, we knew, we knew what was coming, and we knew the price that Jesus was about to pay. At the end of the children's procession here at Woodlawn, the children placed their palm branches right here at the foot of the cross. The very base of this display is the joy and expectation of that triumphant entry that happened so long ago. It's there in those drying palm leaves. Thursday night we celebrated Monday Thursday. During that service, we laid seven large stones at the foot of that cross, laying them on top of those palm branches. Those large stones that you see here represented the sin of mankind, the disobedience towards God, and the disappointment to God. And at the end of that service, we all proceeded to the front of the, the, to the, front of the sanctuary and to the foot of the cross and placed these smaller stones. These stones represent our sin. These stones piled on top of the sin of all mankind. 
These stones, too, placed at the foot of the cross, symbolizing Christ bearing our sins, your sin and my sin, along with the world's sins on the cross at Golgotha. As we look at these stones placed here as part of our Easter display, we should be saddened by our own individual actions and our disobedience towards our Lord. Friday afternoon, we once again raised the cross in our south lot, next to the highway, a symbol for all of Lake City to see, for all of the world to see, as they travel through our little corner of God's creation. A poignant testimony to the price that Jesus paid for all of us on the cross of Calvary. This year marked the seventh year that I've been involved with the cross raising and the eighth year that Woodlawn has performed this service. It's a very impact-filled and moving service, and it's difficult to not feel a sense of sorrow, morose, and guilt as that cross thuds into place as it's raised. The reenactment where all those gathered join hands in pulling the ropes, the ropes that erect the cross, again remind us of our betrayals to God, that we too are guilty of and for his suffering. We pulled those ropes that erected his cross. Just a short while ago, we gathered again around that cross and spent time in worship and remembrance. This time, the crown of thorns was gone, the symbol of suffering, and in its place was a white cloth, a symbol of Christ having risen and leaving the burial shroud behind. A living Savior has no need for burial shrouds. Next, we gathered for a time of fellowship and a communal meal. It's been so long since we've sat and ate together, Praise God for this blessing. Every time we sit down for a fellowship meal, we are called to remember that final meal that Christ shared with his disciples during that first Holy Week. The Last Supper wasn't in the fashion that we currently celebrate communion, but rather it was a meal together, eating together, sharing time together, and loving your fellow believer. Luke 22, verses 19 to 20. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after supper, saying, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Anytime the Christians sit down together to break bread, to share a meal, it's a time to remember Christ and all that transpired during this first holy week. Just a very short while ago, many of us watched and smiled as the children did their annual Easter egg hunt. This is for many the highlight of the Easter service. The children certainly enjoy this part of the celebration the most. This hunt for these eggs, these eggs that symbolize the resurrection. They symbolize life starting anew. Life from what, which in, at first glance appears to be lifeless. The Easter egg is not just a plastic shell filled with treats or a colorful hard-boiled egg. It's a symbol of Christ. Consider the incredible joy that these children exhibit when they find these eggs, the cries of happiness, the laughs, the smiles. This exuberance should be a mere shadow of the joy we each feel when we discover the grace, the love, the reconciliation of Christ. When you witness these children and their joy of discovery for finding these eggs, always remember and relive the joy of discovering your Lord. Today we've added to our Easter display the many Easter lilies given by various members of the congregation in memory of their loved ones who have passed away. The Easter lily has long been a symbol of Easter morning and the resurrection of Christ. The bulbs of these lilies buried in the ground represent the tomb of Jesus and the glorious white triumph trumpet-like and fragrant flowers which grow from these bulbs symbolize his life after death. The snowy white color stands for the purity of the divine Savior and the joy of the resurrection. While the trumpet shape of the flower signifies Gabriel's trumpet call to rebirth and a new life. For many of us, though, the symbol of giving these lilies in memory of our loved ones also confirms our steadfast belief that we will once again see our loved one in God's paradise. Christ's death upon the cross and the empty tomb of Sunday morning promises us this reunion if we too will just believe in and accept Christ as our Savior, if we will just return to the loving arms of our God. The white cloth draped upon the cross is again the symbol of the deserted and unnecessary burial shroud. 
The shroud left behind, because the body wrapped within it has risen. He has risen indeed. The shroud is empty, just as the cross is empty. We serve and worship a risen Savior, a Savior that welcomes us with open arms. If we will just believe in and accept Christ as our Savior, if we will just return to the loving arms of our God. The various butterflies that adorn the sanctuary this morning, most prominently on the large banner above the baptistry, and also the butterflies on either side of the baptistry, signify the death and rebirth of Christ. The death and rebirth that we all promised, or that we are all promised as well. Again, if we will just believe in and accept Christ as our Savior, if we will just return to the loving arms of our God. Finally, just a few moments ago, we witnessed a baptism. Rather, actually, a rebaptism, a rededication of a life to Christ, a remembrance of an original covenant made many years ago and reconfirmed publicly here today, a witness to us all, a very direct and tangible reminder to us all to rededicate ourselves to our Christian faith each Easter morning, each Sunday morning, in fact, each and every morning of our earthly lives. God is not just the God of Easter or the Sabbath. He is the God of each and every day of our lives. Live your lives for him. Do not be like those women leaving the empty tomb in Mark's gospel. Do not be afraid. Go and tell. Tell everyone. You serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He's here right now. He's always here. And he always loves you. Go tell. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Easter morning as we gather here to worship you, we realize that we can never thank you enough for all that you've done for each of us, all that you've done for the entirety of mankind, the gift and promise of eternal life with you in your kingdom. Praise be to God. We thank you, we worship you, we glorify your name, the glory-filled name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Love, glory, and honor forevermore to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.